Hello, everybody, and welcome to .NET Spain 2021. Uh, I am Maddie Legere. I am a program manager on the Xamarin slash .NET MAUI team, um, and I am here to talk to you today about what's new with .NET MAUI. So if you haven't heard of .NET MAUI yet, it is the most productive way to develop native apps that are super performant for iOS, Android, Mac OS, and Windows. And so you might think to yourself, well, that sounds a lot like Xamarin Forms, right? Well, it is. It's an evolution of Xamarin Forms, but it's also expanding to desktop. And we are doing a few new things to make it faster and to also simplify the coding experience so you can do it all from a single code base. And of course, it's all part of .NET 6. So with .NET 6, um, is, .NET MAUI is part of .NET 6. So all you need is the same base class library and all those things for the cross-platform native UI you get with MAUI, um, with that single project system and that single code base for all of the, t the targets you see here. So WinUI Mac, using Mac Catalyst, iOS and Android. Um, and it's all open source. It's all on the .NET GitHub under .NET MAUI. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what those three kind of pillars were, productive, performant, and single code base. First and foremost, the most productive way to develop your apps, uh, to develop cross-platform mobile apps is with .NET MAUI. And there are a couple things we're really focusing on that make uh, developers' lives a lot easier in .NET 6. And the first of that is hot reloading. So you might be familiar with XAML hot reload if you are an existing Xamarin or Windows developers. Uh, we are bringing Hot Reload kind of across the .NET stack, not just for XAML, but also for C Sharp and Razor and CSS, if you're using that anywhere, and a bunch more. So you'll be able to use it for virtually any type of .NET 6 app you are building. I'm not going to demo this today because I don't have a ton of time and I really want to focus on MAUI, but there are a bunch of great .NET 6 Hot Reload demos from the Microsoft Build Conference about a month ago. You can find those online. Uh, and if you also go to YouTube and look up Dimitri Lyolin or .NET Hot Reload or any of those things, I'm sure, I'm sure things will pop up as well. Secondly, you can develop all from Windows. So you can develop all from Mac, of course, but usually when you're developing iOS apps, you need a Mac to do that. To get started with .NET MAUI developing iOS apps, you do not need your Mac for debugging. So really just for testing purposes, you'll, you'll be able to plug, you are able to plug your iPhone into your PC and deploy straight to that and start testing your app there. Uh, for Mac, you need a Mac because it has to run on Mac. But um, for iOS, you can get a lot of the way without actually having to have a Mac yet. Of course, when you want to test it on all different device sizes and simulators and form factors and all that stuff, you're going to want a Mac or to use uh, a cloud build thing like App Center and Test Cloud. Um, but yeah, you can really get a lot of the way there without having to buy a Mac or go to work and get your Mac or whatever it is. And um, that's really helpful for uh, this, this remote world we've kind of been living in lately too. And finally, everything's in VS, uh, VS for Mac. And that means you have powerful IntelliSense and code editing tools. It's all .NET 6, so you can use .NET libraries that are targeting .NET 6 that you're you know, used to using things like system text JSON and all that stuff. Um, and you get all the power of Visual Studio behind it. So it's a very familiar developer environment if you're already a .NET developer. And if you're not, you'll probably love Visual Studio. Um, of course, .NET MAUI is super fast. So one of the big changes from Xamarin and Xamarin Forms is that we've actually re-architected all of the handlers, which we used to call renderers. Uh, from most of the popular controls and layouts that you use to do something called fast rendering um, and, and make them more extensible. But what that actually just means is that your layouts and, and your, your pages are going to render a lot faster. There's also, because of some things we've done with startup and all these other things that don't necessarily make sense to me, but they've made my app start faster and that's awesome. So there will be better performance kind of across the board with your Xamarin, uh, excuse me, with your .NET MAUI apps. Um, I'm trying to see how far I can go into the year without accidentally saying Xamarin instead of .NET MAUI in a talk. And so far we're not, we're not doing very well. I had till November to figure it out. 
Um, finally, we're working on better profiling tools. So there's the Xamarin Profiler available in Visual Studio Enterprise. Um, we're going to bring, because .NET MAUI is part of .NET 6, we're looking at the best ways to integrate with existing .NET profiling tools using the .NET profiling pipelines and all that stuff. So there's nothing um, like announced or, or ready to ship for .NET 6 yet, but because we're being part of .NET, we're making you know, the, these moves to become easily profilable using .NET profiling tools. Um, and hopefully that's something that we can come out with, you know, in the next year or year and a half or so. Um, and beyond that, we're also working on the Xamarin profile t profiler to make sure it works with all this stuff that we're shipping in .NET 6. Finally, uh, and this is what you'll probably see the most of when it comes to Maui specific demos. And this is what I'm going to really show a lot today. So I'm not going to go through it too much on this slide, but we are shipping every, um, you can build everything for your .NET Maui app from a single code base. So it's just a .NET 6 project and it's going to hold all the code for all the platforms, including things like your images and your fonts, raw assets, um, app icons, launch screens, the point of entry. So we're going to have startup.cs now instead of if you were a Xamarin developer um, having to do the different app startup and delegate and all those things for all the different platforms. Just one point of entry. And of course, we're working on um, simplified native library binding, which is something I won't be demoing today. But the idea that if there is a library out there for a native platform that you want to use in your .NET MAUI app, that it's easy to pull in. So those three slides, performance, um, productivity, and then the single code base are really the, the pillars of .NET MAUI. But there's way, way, way more to it than just these three things. One thing I want to call out in particular is that you know, .NET MAUI is the mobile part of .NET. It's also the desktop part when it comes to cross-platform, right? Of course, you can develop native Windows apps if you want to. Um, but if you want to get Mac, Windows, iOS, and Android all at once, you're going to want to use .NET MAUI. Um, but because .NET MAUI is part of .NET and .NET 6, and I said all these things and you get to use the packages and all that, uh, it also enables us to reach across uh, the aisle maybe to some of our friends in Blazor and in the web. So one of the things I'm really excited about with .NET MAUI is the Blazor hybrid desktop app model. So using a MAUI app on Windows and Mac, you will be able to, you can, there's actually a demo of it and it's in my uh, link list, which I will share at the end. Um, you can use a .NET MAUI app container and put a Blazor web view in it and link it right to your Blazor project that exists, the Blazor app. So if you have something running on the web um, and then it will run natively on desktop. You can reuse all those UI components across native and web. Um, and you can embed controls into it. So if you need specific native things like um, an, like offline support or a toast notification or any of these things, uh, you can do that all within the .NET MAUI app that's housing your Blazor app. And all the data is shared between. So there's it's not like you're maintaining two states. It's just your app is now running kind of on the desktop instead of in a browser. Um, this is also going to be something that's GA in .NET 6, but you can start using these things and trying them out now with .NET 6 Preview 4, which I've been really calling like the MAUI release. Um, there was there was so much that came out in .NET 6 Previews 1 through 3, and MAUI was starting to trickle in there, but .NET 6 Preview 4 is really the first place that I think uh, folks can go and build these really beautiful, powerful, real-life apps. Um, and you, you'll see on this slide, it's a screenshot of an app that I'll, I'll show in a little bit, but it's called Weather 21. It was the app we used to demo at Build. And uh, it's, it's beautiful and it was all written with .NET MAUI and there were no custom renderers. Um, everything was built you know, with, with .NET MAUI and, and XAML and C Sharp. So very exciting. Um, if you wanna start trying out .NET 6 Preview 4 today, the best way to do that is with Visual Studio 2019 1611 preview. So I know that is a lot of numbers. Um, preview one of 1611 came out at build at the end of May, and we will continue to add some previews of 1611. But that's where most of the kind of first step preview.NET 6 tools are. There are a lot more .NET 6 tools, and .NET 6 is really going to be the um, the best perform the the best environment to develop .NET 6 apps is really going to be with. Visual Studio 2022. 
um, previews of which are coming soon. If you haven't heard yet, and I don't know how you couldn't have heard yet because it's the best news ever, VS22 is going to be 64-bit. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it in a little bit. It is super blazing fast, but um, yeah, previews for that will start rolling out kind of uh, over the summer, and uh, .NET 6 is going to be... Uh, the home of .NET 6 will be Visual Studio 2022. I need to figure out how to say that. I keep like, I'm like v .NET 6 is in VS 2022. VS 22 is the home of .NET 6. There's all these numbers. But 16.11 is going to get you the preview. So VS 2019, 16.11. That's going to get you some started with your .NET 6 previews. But really, you're going to want to use VS 2022 to do the most powerful .NET 6 development come this fall. So let's uh, hop into some demos. And this is a link to the Maui samples GitHub. So like I said, I have like a list of lists or a list of links um, that I'll put up on the last slide. It is Maui or the URL is dot com slash Maui dash dot net Spain. Um, so you can type that in and hopefully that works. And hopefully I said it right with all the dashes and slashes, but it will be uh, up at the end of this, and and um, it was also on the first slide too. If you want to rewind, but yeah, this is the samples repo, which is a really good place to pull down um, the existing .NET samples and uh, .NET Maui specifically samples, and and poke around and start to see what the code is like. But I'm not going to show these today because I want to show how you set this up and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So I'm going to get on my slides, Boop, minimize that. Um, and this is my terminal, so it's just PowerShell, nothing fancy. Um, I color coded it and all that. And the first thing that I think everybody should do when you are testing out a .NET MAUI app is get the tool MAUI check. So if you are not familiar with the .NET command line, it's just .NET tool install, install it globally because it's the Beth. And then this is the name uh, of the package. It's reth.net.maui.check. Um, I already have it installed, so and I already have it updated, so I'm not going to actually hit enter here. But this is a community package by one of the engineers on our team, actually, Jonathan Dick, who's fantastic, who created this to easily set up all the .NET 6 previews for you and make sure all your bits are in place when it comes to Android and iOS and all that. So I'm going to run it using Maui-check. It's going to ask me for administrator permission. I'm going to hit yes, and then I'm going to pull it in here. Um, and it just opens up this little command prompt. It goes through, it checks out my OpenJDK, it checks out my Android emulators and my Android SDKs and my .NET SDKs, and then it does the files it needs for VS to pick up uh, .NET, and then it makes sure I have all the right SDK packs I need uh, for the current preview of .NET. Um, and it says everything looks great. Thanks, Maui Check. Cool. So what I can do now is I can do .NET new, and I'm going to do dash dash list. Because what this has done is installed a whole bunch of templates for me, including this beautiful one right here, .NET MAUI, um, and also the .NET MAUI Blazor app. So I'm not going to do the Blazor desktop demo. I said that's one of the links um, that I'll have in my link list of links. Um, but you can also file new the MAUI app with a Blazor web view in it. But we're going to look at this one today, .NET MAUI app, which is very exciting. Um, there's also all the native ones. So if you're a Xamarin iOS or a Xamarin Android developer, it's just .NET iOS and .NET Android, and of course Mac and Mac Catalyst and tvOS, so everything you need. And that's Maui Check. Maui Check is going to set this all up for you, and it's wonderful. So then I can go into, I can use the command line to create a new app if I want to. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Visual Studio 2019 version 1611, and I'm going to hit Create a New Project. So I'm going to give it a second, it's thinking. And you can see it's in my recent project templates, but I can also search Maui. Oh, and it just found it for me. It's a .NET Maui app. You can see all these things it's targeting. C Sharp, Android, or all the tags for it that are in the um, uh, new project kind of installer thing. So you can look it up with Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, Mac OS, Maui WinUI, all the tags. I'll name it Maui app one because that's what it's telling me to name it. And I'll hit create. And I'll give it a second to start thinking about this. Um, so yeah, all I had to do was run Maui check. It's going to install those template packs for me and, and set it up so that VS picks it right up. Um, so it's going to take a few seconds here to kind of load all of my dependencies in. Um, 
And what we'll do is we'll expand this Maui app and we'll start with taking a look at the csproj file, which is right here, edit project file. Um, cool. So this is the new SDK style .NET 6 project file for our singular Maui app project. Uh, there's some Win UI stuff here, we'll get to that in a second, but it's, it's temporary. It will just be one project right here um, when we ship GA. But right now, this is what you're gonna see. Um, and you can click on the CS project and see that I've got uh, the app title, the app ID, and the version all right here, as well as these item groups. And they're including things nicely commented out for me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, template. The Maui image and the Maui splash screen and the Maui font types. So remember when I said that we were gonna be able to share things? That's what this is. Um, my, my app icon is actually just two images smushed together. So I have my app icon and then I have the foreground file. We'll take a look at that um, when I pull up the emulator in a second. And then we have uh, the splash screen, which is just an image, an SVG image with a color um, for the background. And then of course, just wildcards for the rest of the images and fonts folders, which are in here. So right here is my resources. They're all shared across all the platforms I'm deploying to. Um, they're automatically carried over to the WinUI app uh, in the template, which is good. So you can go into images and see I have my .NET bot and I have my fonts and I have all this stuff. Beautiful. Um, and that is kind of how we share everything. So the next thing that's really exciting about the Maui single project is this startup CS file. So instead of in your iOS and Android apps, you probably had an app delegate or a main activity.cs or whatever they were called. They, it was all different file names. And in every single one, you had to do a forms init. And if you had any third party packages you were building, you had to initialize those in your um, specific platform specific startup file. But now it's all here. It's all in this little app startup.cs. And so I have forms compatibility here use Maui app and my app entry point, which is app.xaml. Um, and then of course, configuring the fonts I wanna use and share across platforms, this just sets it up for you. Instead of having to do any assembly info, it just makes sure it's all um, under the alias I want. So in this in this template, we're using Open Sans. So it sets it up for you with the right alias, uh, given the font file that you put in your resources folder right here. Um, and then there is the platform specific code. So I'm actually, I'm gonna start building and deploying those while I talk through these so that it gets started. Um, but in my Android, you can see I have any specific Android resources I need. I have the Android manifest um, where I can manage permissions and all that. Um, and these things are all gonna get shared more and more as we go through uh, more single project stuff. But right now they still are necessary. Um, and same likewise with iOS, it has you know the entitlements and the info.plist that it needs to understand permissions for the iPhone. Um, and any platform specific files I wanna put, if I, there's resources I just want on Android or if there's anything I just want um, on iOS, code, interfaces, all that stuff, those can go in these files. And they can also go right here using if defs. So we'll take a look at that um, in a different sample app. But what I wanna do now is go to this new multi-targeting um, selector, deployment selector. So I have Maui app one, this shared project here, and um, in it, it has all these different frameworks, iOS, Android, and Mac Catalyst, which are the ones I can target. And then all the different places I could deploy it to. So a remote device, a simulator, a local device for Android and iOS. Um, I'm gonna click Android emulator, and I'm gonna hope it picks up. There we go. Cool, it picked up my emulator. So there is a bug right now that sometimes it doesn't pick up the emulator. Make sure you've already created one with the right Android API. Um, sometimes it helps to start it up before you start VS. Uh, <laughs> but oftentimes it's fixed if you just restart the IDE. I don't know why. We're fixing it. This is all in preview. It's very exciting. But it picked it up for me, which is great. Um, so it's going to go to this Pixel 3 I already have running right here. So um, I'm going to right click deploy it. Make sure that works up nicely. Um, Debugging, depending on the version of stuff you have, like my debugging is totally broken right now and it's probably my fault. Um, apps should debug no problem, um, but feel free to tweet us. Like this is, I, I've been saying to folks, um, 
you know, we're testing out all these different versions of Windows and versions of VS and people's emulators and setups and CPUs and all the different variables there are. So feel free to file a bug or, um, you know, tweet us or anything if you can't get it to work. Um, we'll probably figure it out and then you will be helping us make it better for everybody else. So in my case, it doesn't like debugging on Android right now, um, but it does deploy no problem. So I can go and I can see this Maui app one, which is just this app. And this app icon is just literally the .NET logo as a foreground image and then the purple circle as my background image or a purple square, whatever it is. And this launch screen, same thing, the .NET logo um, with purple as the hex code behind all built in the shared resources folder here. And then this is our new template. It's very exciting. Um, it's got this cute little .NET bot. It's got this little click me button that I can click as many times as I want. And it updates my current count right here. Um, and of course, you know, it's fully cross platform. So I mentioned WinUI is kind of weird right now. So you see that there are these package, these two projects here. Um, that's because WinUI does not have the capability just yet to run like unpackaged uh, via just a .NET 6 target framework. So this is what we're doing for right now. This is gonna get fixed by .NET 6, so it will just be the secret project. But if you wanna see what this app looks like on your Windows device, um, and this is just Windows 10 right here, you can right click on this, you can set a startup project, and then you can debug it straight to the local machine or you know if you have it deployed or whatever. Um, I'm gonna give it a sec to load up. Very exciting. And then, boop, 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 it's thinking. Ooh, deploy started. This is installing it. This is like uh, taking this package and installing it as if it came from the Windows Store, basically, to my um, to my device now. And then it says ready. And then it popped up on my other monitor, of course. And I can pull it over. And it's right there. It's the same app. Same code, um, same image, same logic, all that stuff. Um, and it's native. So you can see the biggest difference here with the two controls is that this button is slightly different. I know it's super zoomed out. Um, this button is slightly different than the Android button. And that's because it's using the native controls under the hood still, but I can always customize them and format them to look identical if I want to. Um, okay, cool. Let me check where I am with time. Okay, we're good. Good, good, good. Don't want to run over because I know there are so many amazing talks at this conference this week. All right, we're gonna close out of Visual Studio 2019. Bye. Um, we're gonna keep this app up, because why not? And then I'm gonna pull up a different sample app. So this is Weather 21. Um, this was the app that David Ordnow and I believe Dimitri Lyelin and Daniel Roth all demoed. They all had different versions of it, depending on what they were demoing. Um, but at Build during the .NET 6 deep dive session. So this is a, a pretty, pretty, complicated app. I don't know the best word for it. Complicated in UI at least. So we'll pull it up here on my Android emulator so we can take a look. Boop. And I already deployed this one because I didn't want to wait for it. Um, you can see it's got that that uh, cloud and moon icon as the app icon. And it pulls right up and it's, it's really, it is complicated. I think that is the word I wanted. Um, it's got all these different pictures and images for all the different weather. It's got this, oh, scroll up. Come on. Um, you know, this, this big hero image, I've got my daily forecasts, I got a favorites page with all these beautiful cards, um, a wind map, which is loading in a map from windy.com, which I think is pretty cool. And of course my settings page, let's go back to home. Um, and this is all a native Android app. This is built 100% with .NET MAUI. Um, so I mentioned, you know, you can put platform specific code in your, um, in the platform folders if you want. Oh, let me minimize this and maximize this, which is the correct project. So I could go and put platform specific code in my Android project or my Mac Catalyst project. But in this case, um, I actually wanted to do it as an if def. And by I, I mean David Ort now who built this app, who's fantastic. And so on Windows and Mac, they added these uh, services for the tray and notification services. Let me zoom back in in a better way so you can see. Um, so the Win, WinUI Windows Tray Service and the Mac Catalyst Tray Service, right? And then in the Mac folder and in the WinUI app down here, boop, 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 they added these tray icons, which is this cute little bot guy. Um, oh, wrong one to minimize. 
Same tray icon right here, right? So this is saying um, in Mac Catalyst, add this tray service and we'll, you know, access it at some other point. And then I can go into my pages here and in my home page, XAML CS, um, you can see that we have a set up app, app icon set up app actions and set up tray icon functions in here. So let's go to set up tray icon. And all that does is uh, in the tray, it initializes my tray service and then it has a notification uh, and it says hello from .NET MAUI. So if we go over to my main monitor, um, minimize, oh, hold on. So if we go over to my main monitor, pop that up. Um, it's way too big for the screen, one second. Doo, doo, doo. Just, just stream problems. Um, down here in this corner, um, if I start running this Weather 21 app, boop, 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 give it a second to load. Oh, I can put myself back on top. Hi, there I am. Um, give it a second to load and debug. You can see this beautiful app pops up. It's exactly the same one we had on Android. I can actually pull that over to show it to you. Um, boop. There we go. Um, and so of course it's responsive. It's it's now made for you know Windows and desktop, but it's the same icons, the same images, all that stuff. Um, and then there's this little .NET bot down here. Let's zoom in him. He's cute. It's very pixelated because he's very small, but that is that um, icon that I had in the shared uh, Mac and Windows resources. And if I click on it, it sends me a notification. Look at this. Hello, build from .NET MAUI. Um, oh my goodness, you can't see it because I'm on top. One sec. Let me, let me hide myself. There we go. <laughs> Hello, build from .NET MAUI. Um, and I can zoom back in and show you that icon again. Doop. I'll close out of it. Zoom back in, show you that icon again, right there. Um, so bear with me for the, the technical issues. It has been difficult trying to do all this remote stuff, but this should be good and I'm back. Um, and I'm back on my other monitor now, so I'll pull this over and it's the same app, beautiful, um, all with .NET MAUI and with uh, shared images and our if defs and all that beautiful stuff. Um, so yeah, so these are all available on GitHub. Um, again, I have the links somewhere and I will uh, put them in the end of this presentation. Um, but yeah, I would definitely check out Weather 21 is one of the sample apps. Um, that's kind of a more realistic, real app that you might actually download and use um, using .NET MAUI. And we're working on pulling the weather live from different APIs. So that's in a branch right now, but right now it's just static data, but um, we're going to continue to kind of iterate on this and use it as um, a great sample for people who want to get started with MAUI. And the other place is, of course, the link I showed in the beginning in the slides, which is the github.com.net MAUI samples repository. Um, that is another good samples area. But now you have the templates too, so they're pretty good. So let's present from this current slide. Um, and let's talk about, minimize this. Minimize that. Good. Okay, now I'm back. I have to make sure all my windows get readjusted right. Let's talk about what's coming in previews five and six. So there's a whole bunch of things um, that you've probably gotten used to if you're a Xamarin developer that are amazing, um, including brushes and shapes and clipping and borders and corners and shadows. Um, so more things that kind of help you customize controls, make your apps more beautiful and all that stuff. Um, so Definitely keep your eye out. The blog is really the best place for updates. Um, we'll continue to blog every time there's a .NET 6 preview release. And, and if it's a pretty hefty malware release, which five and six probably will be, we'll have a separate blog kind of detailing what's in the .NET MAUI release. Um, and of course you can always follow us on our GitHub. Um, let me move my face, hide it, bye. There we go. So now you can see uh, the Discord and the GitHub links. Um, the Discord is actually a place if you want to talk architecture, that is a really good place to go uh, because that is where the entire Xamarin Forms team slash .NET MAUI team, eventually I'll say .NET MAUI every time, um, is where they're actually doing their work. So you can chat with them. Um, it's not so much for troubleshooting as it, as it is for like, hey, why are you guys writing your code this way? Or how would I do this if I wanted to extend this for my platform? Um, and of course the GitHub is a great place to go. 
If you want to check in with us in person, feel free to join the .NET Community Stand-Up. Uh, it happens the first Thursday of every month. At uh, This says noon, and then 3 is cut off, but it's actually 1 Eastern Time, 10 Pacific Time. Um, and live.dot.dot.net has it all on the schedule, so you can always go check. But we'll go through community news and contributions to our open source stuff, and then of course we'll talk about .NET Maui. We'll give you kind of a status update straight from Dave, Dave Orton now and me. Um, so that's kind of the most up-to-date place to get info if there hasn't been a conference or anything in between. Um, and if you're an open source library maintainer, any open source library, doesn't matter if you are a cross-platform framework or just just Windows or whatever it is, um, or if you're, you know, you know, like you're someone who's not actively working on something, but you kind of want to get an idea of what's going on with .NET Maui and .NET 6, feel free to email David here, um, david.ortonow at microsoft.com, and you can join his monthly sync with open source library maintainers. Um, and also meet some other folks from different open source libraries. Um, and, and that's really where Dave and the engineers of the team will deep dive on architecture. Um, and, and you can ask your questions about how to kind of get your open source library ready for .NET 6. Um, finally, my favorite place is the Themes of .NET website. So Themes of .NET is um, something that Emo Landworth on our team made to just nicely compiles all of the GitHub issues we have that are targeted towards .NET 6 and the major themes. So the .NET MAUI project and I don't know. Oh, I can put my face back up too. Hold on. Hi. Um, the .NET MAUI project, yeah, um, is really all based under the .NET has a great client app development experience theme. It's a lot of words. But that's the one I have expanded here. Um, so Xamarin developers can use the latest SDKs, which really means like .NET 6 and .NET MAUI. Um, there's another one more for MAUI specific stuff, but all of these things are getting updated here. Um, and they're committed and in progress. And you can also see what else is going on across all of .NET for .NET 6 and interact with people and ask your questions on the GitHub issues here. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining. I didn't go over time. Awesome. You have a few minutes left to go grab a drink, take a break, and come right back for the next sessions. Um, the URL list, I promised, it's there. The URL is.com slash Maui dash dot net Spain. Um, if there were any questions you had that I didn't answer, feel free to tweet me at MaddieLegere1 or email me maddie at Microsoft.com. Um, and like I said, there are definitely still some kinks we're working out with um, .NET 6 previews in Visual Studio, but I encourage everyone to give it a shot and start to play around with it and start filing bugs and tell us what's not working or what is working or what you like or what you don't like, because really we're kind of in polishing mode now. We're going to make everything work as smoothly as possible so that in November um, with .NET 6 and the GA release, everyone is ready to roll and can start building their .NET MAUI apps day one. So yeah, thank you so much for joining and uh, reach out anytime for with any questions. Bye.